everyone and welcome back to my channel for part two of me and Annie Bat's collaboration. Pop over to her channel and watch her video first if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description, because you'll want to know her lovely story prompt she wrote that is going to inspire how I decorate the lot. I'm here in my Tess neighborhood and I'm really excited to check out the lot she made for us to decorate. Um, I haven't looked at it yet so we're gonna get my first reaction, I've only seen it in the little lot bin here light on the hill Ooh, it looks so cool i wonder which way we should put it oh that's too bad my beach is like so little there i wonder that would kind of be a cool spot for it well let's try it oh okay it just <laughs> made the beach longer that's okay though from annie's story we get the vibe that this is a very isolated place and it's gonna kill that illusion if we keep seeing the uh, Barbie dream house build two blocks away from us. So I'm just putting some big mountains here to hopefully block my whole test neighborhood off. Then I found this random cave. I don't know what it is or where it's from, but I tucked it into the mountain there. Yeah, I got distracted doing that for no reason, but in the end it does kind of, you know, tie into my story. And now we can load the lot and check it out for the first time. Ooh. Oh, oh my god, this little roof is so cute. I love how it looks like a face. Okay, well, first things first, because I have, I think, wall, or I don't know how to pronounce it, water mod, I just have to do that so that the ocean won't look so scary and poo. Aw, oh, it's so cute. Yeah, only downside of that mod, though, is sometimes the, then the reflections are crazy. What a darling lighthouse. Okay, let's check it out. Here's the top floor. So you can come up here, a little lookout. There's doors to come outside. The classic lighthouse winding staircase. Aw, so cute. So there's a little stove in here. So I guess this can be the bathroom, probably. Also, what even floor is this? Never knew this floor existed in my life. It's kind of cool. I love the little roof and the like walkway on the top. This is like a really nice lighthouse. I feel like I tried to build a lighthouse once and it was really hard. And let's see our view from the other side now that we tried to hide most of my neighborhood. <laughs> oh God, well, yeah, you know, it's a very secluded lighthouse. It's really guiding a lot of people. And there's our scary tunnel we made. I also love that both Annie and I, of course, made lots that have <laughs> constrained floor elevation um fiddle dg that's not a phrase all right i'm excited to start i should definitely maybe do some landscaping out here but i think first maybe we should decide how to do the wallpaper and the floors and everything i love the first line in annie's story clad in red and white alone on top of a hill and i'm like it's santa and then she's like no it's a lighthouse and i was shook but what's this lighthouse going to be all about you know this story it's given me all different vibes it's given me all sorts of feelings um it's funny when annie first sent it to me i was like "Ooh, the ending is so creepy and spooky and she's like, yeah, well, it's also kind of inspired by the Moomins. And I was like, oh, huh, yeah, I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be creepy, but of course I'm just drawn to <laughs> read that into it, I guess. I was excited that she made a lighthouse for me. I really got to dive into a few different vibes that I really enjoyed. It being a lighthouse gave me Southern Reach Trilogy Annihilation vibes, if you've ever read those books or watched that movie. Um, they're some of my favorites, and there's a prominent lighthouse in those books, so now my brain is broken, and anytime there's a lighthouse, I'm like, it lighthouse, annihilation. I was also obviously inspired by the movie The Lighthouse, which is a great film. I just spill your beans and all that. So I think those definitely inspired me to make the lighthouse feel a bit abandoned and overgrown and maybe start adding a little bit of a spooky atmosphere. And then in Annie's story, the kind of more wholesome orphan vibe of it reminded me of the Boxcar Children books, which, oh my God, I was obsessed with when I was a kid. And I feel like there were 200 of them, or I think they're orphans. 
I think they're orphans, but maybe they have a super rich grandpa or like benefactor eventually, but they solve mysteries because obviously. And in the early books, their whole thing is they're always finding some random abandoned place to live, like while like living in a boxcar. And then they do little domestic DIY projects and fix them up like, ooh, we're going to turn these apple crates into a delightful tea table. So I'm definitely gonna be channeling some boxcar children vibes. I was really excited about that. I love that Annie put the lighthouse up on this little hill, this rock outcropping. It was really fun to make this winding landscaping with bushes all around the lighthouse. And I definitely noticed that there are three siblings in her story and there are three trees decorating the front yard. So I sort of felt like that inspired me to make a detailed garden. And because she mentions the four seasons so prominently in her story, as I landscaped, I got the idea to represent the four seasons around the house like a calendar of the year. So I represented the seasons in their famous order, winter, fall, spring, summer wait no yeah well apparently i forgot how the seasons work and i somehow managed to really confuse myself while doing this so yeah obviously it isn't perfect but i tried my best to make four different garden areas around the base of the lighthouse that had different plants or shades of leaves to show the different times of the year in Annie's story, she mentions the tall grass that grows during summer, so I put lots of grass and overgrown daisies and wildflowers over here in the summer section. I sadly didn't have any strawberries, which I thought I had a strawberry plant, so I was annoyed at myself. But I didn't want to go download one because I was in my gardening zen. I also didn't have a cherry tree for springtime. I was like, oh my god, I should have downloaded Azar's cherry trees with the planting overhaul. You freaking snooze, you lose. I used the sandy beach terrain paint with the starfish and shells over in the summer area here to add some more beach vibes. And I ended up adding these Castaway Stories palm trees just because the one that's coming out of the side of the hill looks so cute. Oh my god, it gave me Pippi Longstocking vibes. And so it ended up that the lighthouse sort of has a vaguely tropical element to it because I just love how the palm trees looked. And I don't know, it kind of makes it look whimsical and piratey, I guess, so I like that. I ended up keeping these snowy holiday windows that Annie put in here and just changing the color. I don't think I've ever actually used them before this build, but I thought they looked really cute here. Here is where I start decorating the lighthouse and the way I'm thinking about Annie's story starts to kind of come together. Her story reminded me of folklore stories and had that tinge of magical realism to me, even though she doesn't specifically mention anything strictly magical, obviously, but the image of these kids on their own taking over this abandoned lighthouse, like why is it abandoned? Is it actually? Where did they get this key from? What does this letter say? Uh, I put all these chickens here to just fill the slots so that items wouldn't pop into them while I was cluttering up the floor, uh, but then I forgot about them until I was filming the tour. So they're there the whole time. I guess the kids collect them or something. So the decor of the house is not very functional and it's not really focused on being a very functional home because in Annie's story she says it wasn't built as one. And so I kind of decorated with this fantasy vibe of just toys, Christmas stuff, random various nautical things. Uh, there's no fridge or even a shower because the boxcar children did not have a fridge and they really did just fine. And speaking of them, here I am finding a little milk bottle because my main thing I was obsessed with in this build was recreating a specific memory I have of the boxcar children. When am I gonna stop talking about them? No one knows. Where in the first book where they live in a boxcar, they go to this pond nearby that has a little waterfall and behind that waterfall is a rock you can remove and they put a freaking milk bottle inside of it to make a makeshift refrigerator. And child me was absolutely feral about that. I wanted to make my own waterfall rock fridge. So I was like, I need a milk bottle and I'm gonna have somewhere special for it. But I kind of forgot to do that because I got so distracted by other parts of the build, but I at least did remember to include the milk bottle itself. I made lots of little clutter piles of toys and crafts and a sleeping bag near the stove with some boots drying there as well. Four pairs of boots though but maybe a pair of them used to belong to someone besides the siblings. Something that I really love that 
I mean, no one who watches my videos is probably surprised about is making really elaborate decorated areas that have like no function, but just rotating deco objects until they all kind of fit perfectly near each other and finding the different angles that allow them to fit together as close as possible. The aesthetic of this build ended up being like point and click adventure, cute, scary vibe game. Like one of those games where these are the different scenes you see, like walking around the rooms and you can pick up the objects and rotate them around. And maybe on the bottom of this giraffe or origami or something is a code you need or an important symbol. And kids left to their own devices will draw on the walls because it's cool and fun. So I added little drawings around. But yeah, I think this build ended up looking really cozy and cute while still being like a little weird and spooky, so I really love that. I found these boards from Pineapple Forest Shabby Set and I thought they seemed perfect to add. This lighthouse is supposedly abandoned, after all. I am assuming these boards are from before, but maybe the kids added them. Or someone else did. To keep something out, maybe? I've had these squid recolors of Ikea's wall writing for forever and I never had the perfect place for them until now, but I absolutely love the vibe they added to the bathroom. It's just like so much fun. I weirdly love how the bathroom turned out. Now this second floor room up here is the bedroom. I fit one double bed and three kids could probably fit in a double bed, plus there's a sleeping bag downstairs, so they do have somewhere to sleep. Uh, I decided to make this little makeshift Christmas tree. I used the tilted light bulbs that Pineapple Forest made, and I think it looks really cute and silly and homemade. Decorating this room was really fun. I tried to think of what treasure might mean for some kids living in a lighthouse. Annie mentions treasure washing up on the shore, but I mean, treasure might not be literal, you know? This box of firecrackers and toys and lemons and shells might be a treasure to them. Although I guess firecrackers that wash up on shore probably aren't gonna light very well. But I feel like this room ended up capturing the point and click hidden object vibe very well. I definitely want to pick up and investigate a lot of these items. I put this big anchor here, they dragged it up here I guess. I was really trying to stick to the whitewashed walls vibes I had going, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I needed dark crazy wallpaper, I needed my fix. I was originally going white walls as an homage to the little houses that Fiona fixes up in the movie The Secret of Ronanish. Shouts out to a classic flick. Now, obviously these stairwells are very small, there's not too much we can do with them, but I had for some reason put this sawhorse and menacing skull outside the front door, so it seems to me like the kids are hiding from something. The end of Annie's story is a bit menacing to me, like why are they looking out at the water? What is going to come out of it? What are they waiting for? It started making me think that maybe this lighthouse, you know, wasn't truly forgotten after all. Maybe these kids know they aren't really supposed to be here and they're boarding things up and hiding in the top of the tower. So I used the red light bulbs to give kind of a scary emergency light vibe and I used different faces and masks and things that maybe give an ominous energy to ward off whoever is trying to get up these stairs after them. The top area up here is really small, but the kids are waiting up here and using it as a vantage point, so I feel like they would probably make a makeshift cozy spot. I combined some Jonesy repoed blankets and pillows and a rug and it looks so cozy that I want to hang out up here. Then, as anyone who has ever shut themselves up in an old lighthouse will tell you, the holidays are really about avoiding scurvy, so we have lots of nice citrus and berries here for them to snack on and maybe they're using this radio to monitor the surroundings and pick up signals from anyone who might be approaching. Finally, down here, I fleshed this out a tiny bit with a cooking stove and some boxes and stuff. Using the Malm dressers backwards as fake crates is another trick I copied from Zarathustra. And yeah, I just put some tools and equipment in here, but not too much stuff. And then this is me being like, oh my god, I didn't do anything special with my freaking milk bottle that I cared so much about. So I just put it up here because one of life's greatest pleasures is sleeping with a giant bottle of milk next to your bed. Just kidding. 
don't worry about what this is over here. Now I'm finally done decorating the lighthouse and ready to share my spin on Annie's story with you guys. She really knocked it out of the park when she finished my story, so I hope that I can do hers justice. Um, I decided to kind of format it like a whimsical fairy story or sea shanty vibe thing. So I will warn you, it does rhyme and I really hope you enjoy it. I work in the lighthouse, you must heed my tale, of the feral cave children, nocturnal and frail, who bash at my windows with terrible wails. I plead you to come pick me up, let's set sail. This was the letter he wrote on that night, up in the tower while shining his light, looking upon the three children with fright, their eyes glowing in ways that suggested they bite. No one had worked in that spot for some time. The floor was all dusty, the walls streaked with grime, but truly some time alone sounded sublime. So he'd taken the job on the government's dime. The boat said they'd come back for the man in one year. He marked days on the wall to keep track with great fear, as each night the cave children soon did appear, pleading, Sir, open up, in a voice so sincere. See, cave children live in the darkest of spots, and deep in the shadows they like to hatch plots of how to steal treasure without getting caught. And over the years, they'd obtained quite a lot. Boats in the dark, well, they crash on the shore, and all of their spoils are free for the score. The pesky light keeper the light did restore, and soon they were no more big wrecks to explore. Feral cave children, they have their own laws. To each will be his what he gains with his claws. The light keeper thought then that he would withdraw to the top of the tower with one fatal flaw. One final letter, it's no guarantee. In his wild fervor, he tossed in the key and the bottle went sailing right into the sea. But what happened next? Oh, how could he foresee? The cave children climbed up, ready for war. The youngest so slim, she slipped under the door. The light keeper fought, then he let out a roar. And soon it was quiet, well, just like before. The bottle got stuck on an old rotten dock. The oldest swam out there in only her socks, waving the key at her siblings in shock. She swam towards the shore, kicking off from the rocks. The details aren't clear. Was he pushed? Did he fall? If you ask the cave children, they sure can't recall. They hid just in case someone else heard the brawl, then moved to the lighthouse, their treasure and all. The year passed by quickly, as years tend to do. As winter grew closer, anxiety grew. The lightkeeper's contract was up for renew, and maybe soon boats would appear in the blue. I've heard a rumor the kids are still there, watching the water with unblinking stares. Sometimes the lightkeeper's voice fills the air, or is it the wind? See, the roof needs repair. And they say each year on the first late night snow, who should appear right there floating below? Hoping his crew will come get him and go, the lightkeeper thinks they sail terribly slow. And when he shows up, then the lighthouse does shine, lit by a power that some call divine, saving the ships that get lost in the brine. No treasure for cave children, though they may pine. So that is my tale of holiday dread. I'm sorry it wasn't heartwarming instead. And if you don't want a cave child to gnaw on your head, then be sure you don't sleep with milk next to your bed.